Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most historic jazz guitar albums of all time. It's called Smokin' at the Half Note by Wes Montgomery. Uh, if you haven't heard it and you haven't heard his solo on the F Blues, No Blues, it's called, stop the video right now, go check it out. It is essential listening for any jazz guitar player, and uh, I highly recommend learning as much of that guitar solo as you can. However, today we're not going to be talking about Wes, and we're not going to be talking about No Blues. We're going to be talking about the piano player, Wynton Kelly, uh, one of the most swinging piano players of all time. He played with Miles, obviously played with Wes, Cannonball. Uh, he's on countless records. And we're going to be talking about his solo on Unit 7. Now this lick is a little bit longer, it's over the first eight bars of the blues, but I decided to keep the whole phrase and show you everything because it's just full of so much useful information. Um, so if you bear with me, you're going to get a lot out of it. I'm going to show you how to play the uh, lick on the guitar, I'm going to show you the notation, the excerpt from the record, and then talk a little bit about the theory behind the phrase and how to extract some of the more useful devices out of it. Alright, enjoy! So in this lick, we're going to start on the D string on the 12th fret. I'm starting with my pinky, and we're going to go down 12, 11, 10, skip down to 8, 7, back up to 8, then the G string, 7, 10, to the B string on 10. I just want to stop there and uh, talk a little bit about that. So. This arpeggio right here is a B flat major seven arpeggio. And remember we're on a C seven chord. Um, so a B flat major seven over the C seven uh, highlights all of the upper extensions of that chord. Sounds really beautiful, sort of like a dominant seven sus sound. Um, so if we look at this arpeggio, it's starting on the 7th, the major 7th of our B flat major 7 arpeggio. We're going A, B flat, D, F, A. So those chord tones are the 13th, 7th, 9th, 11th, and 13th. So that's all the upper extensions of the chord. Now at this point, uh, Witten goes down to the sharp 5 of the C7 chord. We're going to go down to G sharp and play our 16th note triplet, like that, G sharp to A, and I just do that with my pinky. Um, so now we, that's our sharp five, our C7 sharp five. Uh, we're on our way to the, to the four chord, and I'm gonna then go to the G string, to my ninth fret, uh, the note E, and I'm gonna go down chromatically all the way from E to C, like this, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, right? And then I'm gonna leap down to B flat or the eighth fret of my D string, 10th fret of my A, 11, land on the seventh fret of D. So let me just go over that one part right there. It's very clearly taking us from C to F. Listen, if I put a little bit of harmony behind it, I'm starting on the third of my C7 chord and ending on the third of my F7 chord. So really clearly broadcasting the harmony. I also want to talk about this um, chromatic descent between the E and the C. It's uh, the interval between E and C is a major third, and a really common device is to go from uh, 
take the interval of a major third and fill it in chromatically, just like this. So we're going E down to C. Now we can also do this, say, on a minor chord. The interval uh, between the fifth and the flat third is also uh, a major third, and we can fill it in chromatically. And it works out so we're starting on a chord tone and ending on a chord tone. That's the basic principle here. You're starting on a chord tone, filling it in chromatically, and ending on a chord tone. Let me show you that over a minor chord. If we were on C minor, right? The fifth is G, and the third is E flat. Again, that's the interval of a major third. I'm going to go. So I'm going G, G, whoops, G, G flat, F, F flat to E flat. And it's really strong, it's really effective because we're starting on a chord tone and ending on a chord tone on the downbeat. So anyway, back to the lick, I just wanted to, to touch on that from uh, getting from the E to the C. And now of course we're resolving chromatically up to the A, the third of the F chord. Uh, so what happens next? We have a triplet. Um, now, of course, this is on piano, so I did my best to translate it from the piano to the guitar, uh, but the notes are from the seventh fret of the D string, 10th fret of the D string, now a leap up to the eighth fret of the B string, so like this. And I'm kind of, I would hammer on there. A, C, F, and then to the 7th fret of the G string, down to the 10th fret of the um, D string, up to the 10th on G, and now we're on F, we're going to resolve back to the 3rd of our uh, C chord, our 1 chord. Right? We're resolving to E, that's the 9th fret of my G string. And then go down a C major triad, 10th fret of the D, 10th fret of the G, of the A, sorry. And then to the 8th fret of the A string, and then down to the 5th from D, I'm going to come up, D, D sharp, E. So there's our third of our C7 chord, resolving very clearly in that same way. We, we see this time and time again. That is such an effective way to enclose the third. We're a half step above. We come uh, chromatically up like that. F, D, D sharp to E. So let me take it from the F chord. Actually, let me just go through everything we have so far. Sorry, he goes up to G there, just to finish that part of the lick, which is the fifth fret of my D string. That's how I like to play that. And then uh, this last part, he finishes the phrase by playing on the sixth chord and uh, playing some of the tensions there. He goes to our B flat, which is the eighth fret of the D string, and we're going to do a triplet like that, and I'm using my middle and my pinky, B flat to C. Now B flat and C on the A7 chord are the tensions flat 9, sharp 9. Okay, so this is a little bit of an altered dominant. Skip down to the 10th fret of our E string, which is D, and then come back up to the 7th fret of our D string, which is the note A. Now here, this is also very interesting. He leaps down a sixth and then comes back up. Now leaps of a sixth are very effective. Um, we talked a little bit about this in, uh, which was at the Sunny lesson. And uh, this is intervallic leaps that break up an eighth note line to sort of um, extend the melodicism 
without any rest or, or changing the rhythm. It can be a, just an eighth note or sixteenth note line, but the melodic or the intervallic leaps uh, keep the line going. So we're going down a sixth from B flat down to D, and then back up to A. Now. I want to show you some more examples of uh, leaping down a sixth. One of the most recognizable ones is this very famous ending. We're going down C down to E, right? It's a super melodic interval there. Um, there's also just this very common uh, piece of vocabulary, vocabulary that comes up leaping from the third down to the fifth of a chord. So in C, like E down to G. Or even in minor, E flat down to G. Le the leap of a sixth is a very melodic interval. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Right? We're going flat nine, sharp nine. Then uh, the D, of course, is our 11th. And then we're going up a fifth, right? However you want to play it, up to A. Bring, and that's flat nine, sharp nine, sharp nine of the A7 chord. Um, that would bring us to our two. Now in this blues, if you learn unit seven, the two chord is substituted by the flat six major seven, A flat major seven. Uh, but Wynn plays it all the same uh, as if you were going to a D minor chord. Right? We could resolve it going down to the third to F on the D minor chord. That would sound fine. Um, so, yeah, a bunch of useful devices here for getting from one to our four getting back to one, and then playing over six. Um, I hope this was useful for you. I hope you're able to integrate some of these devices over your solo, over blues, or standards alike. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in, in the comments. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.